Today I will be speaking about a topic that is very dear to me because I've been pushing an open source project for the past, uh, well, a bit more than a year, I think, um, which is aimed at building Kubernetes native applications on Java or uh, in Java. Um, I'll be explaining all that in a minute. We will be turning Tomcat into a Kubernetes native thing, illustrated here by the Borg cube, assimilating what Kubernetes is practically doing these days. It's assimilating everything. So yeah, let's. Uh, this talk will be a few slides, and then I'm jumping into kind of a live coding. I will be more like copy pasting code than try to actually write it on the spot. I'm not that good with with, with live coding, but uh, I hope that flow will work. I had a bit of trouble with preparing the demo, ran into all kinds of stupid problems, and I didn't have that a lot of time to practice it. So uh, please, fingers crossed, and bear with me. Um, one more comment on this topic. Uh, Kubernetes operators in the Java community and Kubernetes in general. This is all pretty new stuff, and I'm really trying to um so i i moved into into devops uh four years ago so i'm i'm pretty much swimming in this space for a for a while now and and when i'm trying to bring this java operator sdk to java developers i find it that people have a very hard time it's a lot of time it's very new and 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 hard to grasp why is this a thing and and how does it relate to their daily work so i'd really love it if today you guys turned off the microphone and just jumped in and asked a lot of questions and and questioned me on like hey man this is kind of cool but why should i care about this so whatever things come to mind let's make this more of a discussion than just me talking talking because i would really love to hear how does this resonate with people in the java community so with that said, let's uh, let's jump in. First of all, I'd like to explain Kubernetes and operators on one simple example at the same time because I don't want to spend too much time on these uh, these introductory things. Um, basically, Kubernetes is all about running containerized applications. So, you package your application as Docker container images, and then you want to run them somewhere, and that somewhere is a Kubernetes cluster, which is a bunch of virtual machines or physical machines managed by the Kubernetes engine. And the Kubernetes engine is really cool because how it does this management is the following. On the left side here, you can see that you declare your application in a form of a Kubernetes resource. We can see here we are declaring a deployment, which will be running three replicas of the Nginx 179 image. And there are some other things there which I'll not go in. The three replicas and the Nginx image is the most important. When I submit this YAML file to Kubernetes, Kubernetes will store it in its API server. And Kubernetes internal controllers inside Kubernetes will make this happen on the real cluster, which making it happen in this case means it has to start up three pods, which are basically three containers of type Nginx version 179. So this is what, what Kubernetes does. The important thing here is that this is a declarative way of describing the application. We are not telling Kubernetes to start three containers. We are telling it we want whatever is described here, we want it to happen. And this controller will keep monitoring what we are submitting versus what's reality. So when we submit this and there are no Nginx pods with 179 version running, it will make it happen that three of them will be running. If we resubmit this YAML file and say, we just want two replicas, then the deployment controller will see that the uh, specification doesn't match reality because there are actually three Nginx pods running. So it will destroy one pod to make reality match what's there. So the whole functioning of this controller is based on uh, control theory. 
So it's a continuous loop monitoring and matching the specification to, to reality. Another thing I can do is I will change the version of the Nginx container. What happens in that case, the controller is pretty smart and it will actually execute a rolling upgrade when it sees that the uh, the pods are not of the right version. You'll start up a 7.1.7.10 pod, kill a 1.7.9 pod, start up a 1.7.10 pod and kill the other 1.7.9 pod. And with that, it executed an upgrade. You can see that all kinds of smart behavior can be built into this controller. And what we will be talking today, building, and the controller is, um, we have, I mentioned Kubernetes operators, and I'm talking, and here I'm writing controller. It's kind of the same thing I will show in the demo. It will become more clear what's the distinction between controller and operator, but it's not much. So what we want to do is we want to emulate Kubernetes and write such a controller slash operator ourselves. Why would we do that? We will uh, find out in a moment. So built-in controllers in Kubernetes um, handle all kinds of built-in resources of Kubernetes. What if we want to do something else than what Kubernetes uh, supports out of the box? We can actually extend Kubernetes with more of these resources on the left. We can define something completely different than deployment. We can define our own thing, which will be Tomcat today, with the, our own specification, our own parameters here, and then write a controller that will make that happen on Kubernetes or even outside of the cluster. So we will, with this, we can add application-specific knowledge. We can do orchestration in a much smarter way, a much higher level of abstraction and a higher level of automation than what Kubernetes would give us out of the box. By the way, Kubernetes does give us a lot out of the box. So I'm sometimes finding hard to find good examples of <laughs> writing a controller, but there are some, uh, some very good use cases. So um, yeah, and then comes the question of Java. Because actually all the, well, Kubernetes and all the default controllers and actually all many, many operators that are out there are written in Go because Go is kind of the go-to language in Kubernetes land. However, there is no reason not to do this in Java. And uh, I, I think that especially companies writing internal automation using controllers, companies who are otherwise Java shops, for them, it makes a very, very good sense to write operate using Java. Because learning Go is much harder than learning to write an operator in Java. And then you have two language stacks and everything that you have to manage. And it's also a very, very DevOps thing for Java developers to write Kubernetes operators. Because with this, basically, you not only ship your application, you can ship the automation that keeps your application backed up, upgraded properly and running all the time, which can be extra important for legacy applications that need all kinds of special handling to, I don't know, need to be restarted every second day or something. You can encode all that weirdness into an operator instead of, uh, of writing a wiki page for the operations team to please, you have to do this and you have to do that and don't forget that step and whatever, all these things. So today I came up with an idea to try to make Tomcat cloud native. It's basically going to be a um, completely artificial example. Um, I don't think what I'm going to do here would somebody would actually do this for production deployments for like for real use cases. However, it's going to be a very good example of how to surround something that is actually pretty uh, tricky to manage on Kubernetes with some automation and some abstractions that will make it very Kubernetes friendly. So this example will be the following. We will have two of our own, we'll define two custom resources. One will be Tomcat, 
which will have a version to like define what version of Tomcat do we want to run and the number of replicas. When we create an object of this Tomcat custom resource, by the way, custom resources are kind of like classes and objects. So we have the custom resource definition you'll see in a moment, and then we create instances of it. So we create a new Tomcat, and then our operator will spin up actual Tomcats, as many as we specified replicas, and then we will deploy web applications into them, specifying a var file with a URL, and the operator will download this web application and deploy it into Tomcat. So it's going to be, it's a bit of a weird thing to do, but you will see that with this, these two custom resources, we'll be able to just deploy you know, var files into a bunch of running Tomcats from Kubernetes with just using the normal Kubernetes um, CLI. And it's going to be pretty cool. So bear with me here. Okay. So much for the slides. Does anybody have any questions at this point? If not, then uh, I would like to make the slides not full screen. Yep. Okay. Let's uh, let's jump into it. I will make a. So first of all. Here we have the Java operator SDK. I will actually use the presentation mode in IntelliJ because I want to show you also the structure. Alt one is the, yeah. So we have the Java operator SDK open here. The operator framework is the thing that does all the work. It defines basically an imp one important interface for us to implement and that's the controller. This is what, oops, no, this is the annotation resource controller, yeah, here. So we will write how to create or update a resource and how to delete a resource. These two methods that we will need to implement to make this whole thing work. And so besides the framework, we have a bunch of samples. So you can also take a look here for all kinds of other use cases. And I just just came up with the idea to actually have a skeleton and start with that. So we didn't have that before, but we'll have it soon as soon as I merge the pull request to create a skeleton. So I will now do that. So I will copy the Java operator SDK slash skeleton to I'm working on Windows here with the Windows, uh, the, the Linux, what's it called? W something, something, the Linux inside Windows thing. I'm just trying it out for a few days and it's pretty cool so far. I hope it works out today. Um, yeah, let's call it Tomcat operator. There we go. Okay, let's add it to IntelliJ. Yeah, I have to exit the presentation mode because otherwise I don't see the... Yep, it's a Maven project. All good. Should be imported. Yes, here is our Tomcat operator. Okay, so take, let's take a look at the POM file. Let's name this Tomcat operator. Uh, we don't need a name. Let's give it a group ID, Chicago Jug. And we're missing what? What, 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 what? Okay, I have the actual like ready project here just in case of. Uh, oh, yeah, artifact ID, we're missing a version. Why doesn't it tell me that it's a version that I'm missing? I don't know. 1.0 snapshot. Still missing something. Uh, should be good. Oh yeah, I just have errors here because I need to specify my Docker registry and image where I will be pushing the image. 
I'll just copy paste this part. So I will be building Docker images with a technology called Jib from Google, which is pretty awesome. It just uses Maven to build Docker images without having to have a Docker file and all those things. And it does so in a very, very efficient way. So yeah, check it out, Jib. I haven't, I just recently started using it and it's, it's really awesome. Yeah, it's still complaining anyways. Maven compiler will tell us later what's the problem. Um, okay, so first of all, we here we have a cluster. I will jump into another tool called Kubernetes, which is a bit of a common line GUI for Kubernetes. And let's take a look at what we have in the cluster. Yeah, sometimes I need to just reconnect. Uh, yep, there we go. So we will, uh, we have a list of namespaces and we need to create a new one, which I think I can't do from Kubernetes. So I will create, so using the, I'm using the kube cuttle, kubectl uh, command line tool, just with an alias k to create, do everything on, on Kubernetes, and then we'll, I will use Kubernetes to see what's there. So I'm creating a new namespace on Kubernetes called Tomcat Demo. Um, this namespace is going to host the things that we will be creating today, all our Tomcats. And I'll show you now the flow of how to, how to create an operator that does at least something. First of all, we want to spin up some uh, pods when we when we say we create a Tomcat. How do we do that? First of all, we want to have a custom resource, which I already have here because this is what I left in the skeleton. This is the class that defines uh, basically the, what kind of fields and stuff we have. So our custom resource definition is called tomcats.tomcatoperator.io. People like to use this kind of web URLs in here for some reason. There is an open API v3 schema that tells that we have a version and we have replicas. So the version will be how, what version of Tomcat to deploy and replicas will be um, what how many replicas to deploy. And then we can define things like what's the plural name, singular name, some boilerplate there that needs to be needs to be defined. And now I have this CRD. I can actually create so if it's in our Kubernetes Kubecity, I'll get Tomcat. Tomcat is not a thing that exists in Kubernetes. However, once I apply this CRD. You can notice that I'm always applying something. I'm not telling Kubernetes to create a CRD except when I'm doing the namespace because the namespace is such a simple object, but otherwise I'm always just applying YAML files. So, yep, I have applied this and now Tomcat will become a thing on Kubernetes. I can list all Tomcats. So it says there are no Tomcats in this namespace, but it knows about the existence of Tomcats. Cool, we have that now. So it's time to call our operator Tomcat operator. Yeah, 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 do refactor. And why doesn't it see all the things that it needs to see? I guess because of the Maven errors, maybe. Okay, yes. And we just call our controller controller now. So this is just the initialization of our uh, of our uh, operator. We have we are creating a Kubernetes client. That's we're using the Fabric 8 client, by the way. This Fabric 8 project is some failed pass project where still the, the Kubernetes client, this is, is the Java Kubernetes client project. 
um, that is still very well maintained and pretty good, except for with the overuse of generics. Um, and I'm just starting up a tiny web server here because Kubernetes likes to check on an HTTP endpoint whether the, the application is running and the operator itself will be another application on Kubernetes. Um, okay. I open, I go to the, uh, oh, it didn't rename the file for some reason. Come on. Refactoring a file, some cat operator there. Okay, um, the, and we will, yeah, no, controller is fine like this. The, so, what we need for our controller, so the operator basically offloads all the important logic to a set of controllers. And this is where it comes into like, why do we have an operator and controller as a separate thing? An operator can have more than one controller, each controller being responsible for one custom resource. Sometimes you would want to run controllers as different operators, but sometimes you package them into one. And we actually, in this case, we'll have two controllers, so it makes sense for us. So let me just use my template to copy over the... Uh, we need to map the... Oh yeah, first of all, I will grab a sample Tomcat to show you because we have the CRD, but we also need some instances of it. So this is what that CRD that I was showing, this one. This is what it describes. It's very simple. It's a Tomcat. It has a name and it has a version and it has a number of replicas. That's all we need. And now we need Java classes to map this in memory so our operator can, our controller can work with it. And that's going to be three Java classes here that I just copy over. These are just POJOs that does some, that Jackson mapper maps things to. So you can see the Tomcat spec has a version and replicas because that's under the spec. And then Tomcat has a spec and it also has a status that we don't see here now. Um, it will just show how many ready replicas we have. So we have a we have a POJO that maps Tomcat. Okay. Now, now that we have this Tomcat sample and we have the CRD applied, we can actually go and submit this Tomcat sample to Kubernetes. Yep, test Tomcat one created. We can check it in Kubernetes. We'll list all the Tomcats. And we can see we have test Tomcat 1 here with two replicas and version 9. However, if I ask for the pods that we want to create, there are no pods because we only created a static resource inside Kubernetes and there is no controller to actually do something with it. So let's make it happen. Just finish this controller. We need the Tomcat class here. Um, oh yeah, not here, just Tomcat, because this will be the controller managing the custom resource called Tomcat. Oh, by the way, if I jump in there, you can also see that this extends custom resource, which is a Fabric 8 class. So this is where we interface with the Fabric 8 client. Basically, you could write an operator with just the Fabric 8 client, but the operator SDK gives you a bunch of more wrappers and stuff to hide some ugliness and some boilerplate and all kinds of good things that does, does all kinds of good things for you okay um more tomcat here some more tomcat here and some tomcat here and we should be done controller is already defined in compilation unit yeah. what does that mean i mean this is just an annotation right i can try to Rename it for Tomcat controller. Ah, yeah, it really thinks the annotation is like, uh -huh, because it, yeah, good. Okay, very good now. So we have the Tomcat controller, which anyway makes sense. So this Tomcat controller does not do anything now because its creator update resource method is empty. If I would to log something here, Basically, what happens in Kubernetes, this is one important thing. 
Kubernetes, any change to resources in the Kubernetes API server will be communicated to anybody who is willing to listen in the form of, uh, of events, basically. So whenever um, something happens with a Tomcat resource in Kubernetes, we, this method will be called for us. Like underneath, there is all kinds of magic happening with, uh, with, the, uh, with Fabricate, but in the end, the framework will call this method. So let's just log that. Um, info uh, Tom cat created or updated. We don't really care whether it's created or updated because we just always have to make it happen to verify that it exists. And it's I don't want to call it schema. To call it Tomcat. There we go. And now we will. Uh, we can just run this now. Thing is, with operator development, is that I don't need to run my operator on Kubernetes really while I'm doing development because yeah, I, I can just connect to the Kubernetes API remotely. And it's going to be exactly the same thing as if I was connecting to the Kubernetes API uh, from, uh, from my machine. And that means developing is as, as if I'm just working on a local, on, an, on, a, on any Java application. Cool. Let's make sure I'm running the right Tomcat operator and not the other one. Um, yeah, let's see. What did I, maybe I forgot something. Let's see if it works. Response was unauthorized. Oh, wait. Cannot find custom resource definition with name Tomcat operator. Uh huh. Because that should not be the uh, the custom resource name. Tomcat controller. Uh huh. Yep. No, this should just be Tomcat. I spent so much time yesterday because I misspelled this that I, I debug all kinds of layers I never even saw the, of the Fabricate client. Wait, how do we call that? Uh, is this what I have to put there? Maybe. Oh, I'll just check in the. Uh, yeah, tomcats.tomcatoperator.io, yeah. Whereas these custom resources have so many different names that it's sometimes not easy to find out. Yeah, okay. So Tomcat created or updated. So here we go. So our operator, our controller method has already been called. So now this gives us a chance to actually create, based on this resource, two replicas of Tomcat 9.0. How do we do that? Um, I'll do some copy pasting of code now from the, oops, not this one, but the Tomcat controller. I'll copy this method here that actually creates, so we are not going to be creating pods straight away, we will be creating uh, a Kubernetes deployment, actually, the same deployment I was talking about in the beginning, and then the deployment will create the pods. That will make our life much easier because basically we will be utilizing existing Kubernetes functionality. And you can see that here in this method, the create or update deployment method, what I'm doing here is I'm fetching the current namespace, I um, don't really have time to go into namespaces. Let's say these are isolated spaces inside Kubernetes where basically you can have objects of the same name in different namespaces. That's that's all that namespaces do. Um, we have to take care that if somebody creates a Tomcat sample, like a Tomcat object in some namespace, that we create the Tomcat pods in the same namespace then the custom resource was created. That's what we, uh, what we need to take care from the operator. So, first of all, with the Kubernetes client, we will get the deployment with the name of the Tomcat from the, from the namespace where the Tomcat object was created. So we'll check if there is an existing deployment already in this namespace. I can do, do that with the Kubernetes client, get 
deployment nope there are no deployments here so this will be false this all this will be null so i'm going in here and what we want to do is create a new deployment um java doesn't have support to like define json or yaml files natively in the language so things get a bit messy here what i do to simplify it is to just load a yaml file that contains most of the information that needs to be loaded so i'm going to copy that over from the uh, from the other project so this is the deployment that we want to create you can see that image is always tomcat 8 here but we'll rewrite that um some other things that i don't go into right now yet but it's just a it's a deployment and i will copy over the load yaml method this is just a tiny one okay we have the we have our load yaml method so so yeah so it will load this deployment yaml from the class path and set all the things that are need to be dynamically set inside it like for example here it's setting the image to tomcat and the right version of tomcat so this version here that is wrong will be actually replaced and it sets the number of replicas here it's just pojo manipulation just setting all the right values in all the right places and then in the end it calls the kubernetes client deployments in namespace create this deployment so let's see if that actually works create or update a deployment based on this tomcat error has occurred oh no uh -huh. oh yeah we need to put this into a package oh and here comes the hell with uh, with intellij and creating packages com github i should probably be doing this from the command line but too late container solutions Operator sample. Okay. Please IntelliJ understand that this is a package. I think if I reload the Maven project, it will get that. Does it? more direct okay yeah i hope it does because it is managing now the class pass so it needs to get that no it doesn't what's wrong here resources come github because we should it should be in the same package that's how we are loading the the yaml Oh god, I hate this. And this happens during a demo. Does anybody see what's the what could be the problem? Now in the end is definitely the IO exception. Don't get control, yeah, on during on marshalling. And it's trying to load deployment yaml for sure ah no wait a sec this is uh, the the whole yaml path is specified here but it's actually good from github container solutions operator sample deployment yaml what if i just don't set that there and if this doesn't work we're not doing that great with time then i'll just jump back to the original oh look it's working Creating or updating deployment in Tomcat, deployment test Tomcat 1 in Tomcat demo. 
Okay, so we should have a deployment running now. Let's see. Yep, there we go. We created our test Tomcat from our operator. And I think at this point, I will just switch back to the full working demo and just show you like how it works because there isn't enough time to actually code this whole thing step by step. But I think uh, this should have given you a, an idea of how coding an operator works. It's all about filling in this create or update resource, reacting to the Kubernetes events, and filling in the delete resource also reacting to how to delete a resource. So I will jump out of this demo now and just go deploy the full operator, the full actually working operator onto Kubernetes. Big thanks for uh, for the in the first version of this demo to my colleague Charlotte. She's actually going to do a talk at uh, Jax London, and that's what she's preparing this for. And I just hijacked it. Um, yeah, Kubernetes, and we want to deploy uh, operator .yaml. Yep. So now in, a, in in another namespace called uh, called Tomcat operator, we have our Tomcat nearly running. It's not yet ready. Hopefully, it just it starts up any moment now. Yeah, it looks uh, looks like it's uh, it's doing its thing. Um. So we go back to Tomcat demo and yeah, because that operator is compatible with what this new operator is doing, then there is no problem with, uh, with the fact that our new operator already created things. And what we can do now, the next cool thing is we can, uh, we can create a web app. So we also want to deploy something into this Tomcat that we created. So we have the Tomcat sample, and then we have the web app sample. So this web app will actually, if I create this, then our operator will actually download this WAR file and deploy it into Tomcat. So I'll just do an apply again. Web app sample one. Oh yeah, web apps are not a thing yet. But in this CRD YAML, yeah, now they are created. And now web app sample one is created. And if all goes well, this is the web app that we deployed with some extra stuff that Kubernetes added. But here is our URL. And once the operator processes it, it should also have a status, but I don't see the status. So uh, let's see. Tomcat operator is running, logs, even process successfully. Yeah, it has done the downloading theoretically. So let's see. Also, hey Adam, the operator... I gotta jump off for another really Sorry? talk. Really, I really, I really learned a lot, but I've got to jump to another. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, this is really cool. I'm following it, I'm learning a lot. From there is going to be a recording also, so feel free to uh, to jump out if you can't uh, stay in longer. It's all right. Thank you. So we have a public URL. Actually, this is all running on Google Cloud, by the way, this, uh, this demo. So um, our operator created a service, which in turn created a load balancer, which in turn created a public IP we have. And if all goes well, then yes. Sample application is deployed into our Tomcat. Can't believe that this actually worked. Um, yeah, let's just try to deploy one more uh, 
the other web app sample into the same Tomcat because originally this would have been deployed to the other Tomcat, but I'll just deploy it into the same Tomcat. And now this should also be, whoops, not this browser, but this browser. And the URL Jax. This is Charlotte's sample application, and there we go. Awesome. So I think I will. Uh, how much? Uh, when should I finish, Mary? Like around the okay. now ish, right? Now is up to an hour. Yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah, since this recorded, if folks need to, uh, you know, kind of head back to work. Yeah, if this will be recorded. You can. Yeah, watch I do. It as well. so, yeah. Yeah, I'll just I just point out a few more things in the code, and then uh, then then wrap it up. Sure. Um, there is I can't go much deeper anyway. So you can see. Uh, that whoopsie I'll go to presentation mode again so you can see that there is a Tomcat controller in this demo and then there is a web app controller so both custom resources have their own controllers and the web app controller does different things than the Tomcat controller of course actually the web app controller does an exec call you can just call into another container and and execute commands and what we do here is actually we is, is a it's a bit ugly but it's it's a funny thing that you can actually do in uh, in kubernetes we actually execute a w get dash o command inside the tomcat container remotely and cause that to download uh, the var file and then Tom, and that just downloads the var file into Tomcat's web app directory, and uh, and that deploys it to Tomcat. So that's the uh, that's the that's the thing this web app controller does. And then we, when we want to undeploy, when we delete the web app resource, then we do an rm and just delete the file, and that actually undeploys the resource. This is how Tomcat works, so it's fine. So basically, now we have a way to controlling Tomcat from kubernetes resources which imagine that for your operations team working with uh which works with uh with kubernetes basically they can now do this we can just go go get all web apps and yeah there i have all my some all my web apps or get tomcat and i can list all the tomcats with the same interface same automation same everything as i'm normally working the downside of all this is that you have to write quite a lot of code and this co and it has to handle all kinds of special uh, cases which i don't have to time to go into but one example was if you noticed in the uh, in the tomcat controller we have to distinguish between what if a deployment existed already if not then we do it slightly different things and we just update the fields that are updatable um also here i'm watching whether when the deployment came up and updating the tomcat resource status so when i do this get tomcat and actually print the whole yaml um okay the status is not working for some reason never mind okay well so anyways to do something for example when whoops when the uh, when the uh, controller comes up or sorry, when the when the, the Tomcat comes up, for that I have to actually monitor another resource on Kubernetes. We see events from it, and and things get pretty complicated. So operators are a very powerful thing, but you also have to work for it to uh, to to make them work. Okay, finally, to uh, to wrap things up, there. This is the the progression of how what an operator could do so operator can do basic install pretty much that's what we did now then you can implement maybe seamless upgrades for your application full life cycle management for example backups of the data of the application all kinds of things you can encode in the operator go all the way to like monitoring data and and like interfacing with the monitoring system and helping with that the full autopilot where your application doesn't need to be uh, controlled by any humans because it's like the operator just fully makes it uh, completely automated i'm not sure if people really achieve this level but there are some like pretty advanced operators for example for mysql 
that, that do backups also and all kinds of fancy things. So, but the, the important thing also is there that, that you have the option to climb this ladder. With something like Terraform or Helm, you, you basically stay somewhere around basic install and seamless upgrades. That's all, all you can actually do. Yeah, and we are just three people actually currently building this thing. So we're very much looking for any kind of contributions, feedback, joining the team. We're also very happy to, to help people who are just interested in going deeper into Kubernetes and just picking up some any small thing on the SDK to use that as a learning opportunity, creating a new sample, for example, anything. And we're very happy to to do some handholding and help with, uh, with getting into it. So uh, please get in touch with us. We have a Discord server. I think I put the, oops, the, the link here. Yep, there is the Discord server link. Ask any questions, anything. And especially if you're you're wondering about, let's say you have some some scenario at work or wherever, where you think that oh yeah, this this operator concept is kind of cool, but I'm not really sure is this is this the right scenario for it? Is this the right use case? Then just please get in touch and let's let's talk about it. I'm really fishing for as many use cases and stuff because that makes it makes it easier for me to make the case. Uh, for 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 using this uh, this Java operator SDK, and also if you think that it doesn't make sense, that's also interesting information for me. So also now in the Q and A or whatever, just please please tell me how does this feel? What the yeah whatever what what did you get from this? What are the questions? And yeah, thank you very much for uh, for listening. Thanks, Adam. I have a question. So these operators can they be shared? I mean, you wrote, you took so much pain to write this operator. If somebody else needs it, and if you are wanting to share, like you wrote a piece of code or a library. Yeah, the so sharing, sharing you can do in, in different forms. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, of course, share the code. It's open source. Um, next level is sharing it maybe as a Helm chart. So it's to make it easily installable, the operator itself on Kubernetes. And then there is also a project from Red Hat called Operator Hub, where they're trying to not just like create a, a repository of operators, but also like a lifecycle management thing, which is a bit complicated. And I did not yet ha have time to look into it properly. But we have actually an issue to like get one of our samples into Operator Hub to in that process work out like if there is anything the, the the sdk itself needs to support okay thanks yeah you mentioned mysql operators so i was just wondering i mean all these infrastructural elements app servers database servers there may be a proliferation of these operators different people making different stuff yeah there is there is a lot of operators out there so actually my story is a bit special in the sense that all those operators are written in Go, and the Go SDK is much more mature than the Java SDK. So that's that's a, that's a no-brainer. All these that the, this whole existing operator ecosystem out there is is great. Go ahead, try them. If there is one for like Kafka and whatever, it's it's awesome. Um, where I'm thinking the Java operator SDK fits in is more like writing internal things for uh, for a company. So I say you will not write the next MySQL operator with the Java operator SDK, but you maybe automate your own internal applications that are written in Java using the Java operator SDK. Okay, thanks. Yeah, anybody else? I saw also something on the chat. I'm just trying to find out how to find that in the... Yes, that's right. Um, I guess... I asked a question earlier. Does it also work with a Spring Boot app, which has an embedded Tomcat? So. Um, right. Yeah, that, that doesn't collide with uh, so with with what this operator does really. This is this operator spins up new Tomcats. If if the operator itself would have an embedded Tomcat, that doesn't really matter. And. To be honest, oh, and thank you very much from everybody who is writing in the in the comments. Um, so the usually you wouldn't run Tomcat like this in in Kubernetes. This is a bit of an artificial example just to show something cool. 
because how you normally run Tomcat on Kubernetes is you just bake the Tomcat in with the var file into one Docker image and then just deploy basically one var file with one Tomcat as your application. So you create this, this like everything packaged together, kind of like Spring Boot does the Uber jar. That's, right. so that's, a, that's a normal way to do it. This is this is a this is just for fun. This example. Just to demo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let me see. It doesn't appear to have more question in that uh, comment, but everybody is has uh, really enjoy your talk. Um, actually, for me, I'm curious too. So I, I know while well, you're dealing with only operators, but how about like the the actual Kubernetes on different cloud platform? Are you uh, do we have to worry about the you know what you know? Uh, okay, let me put it that way. Are uh, the oper this operator SDK is pretty much agnostic to the cloud platform where you'll be running your Kubernetes? Am I correct then? Or? Yes, absolutely. It's okay. completely. And that's the great thing about Kubernetes. Once you work with the, this, the Kubernetes API, you can deploy to any cloud provider as I'm using Google Cloud here. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if I'm doing a conference talk, I'm just using uh, Docker for desktop, which can also spin up a Kubernetes cluster on my machine. And I just use that and it's, and it's it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So that that's cool. Very good. Okay. Great. All right. That's great. So, um, does anyone have uh, questions for uh, Adam at this point? I guess if you if you're still thinking of some questions or still thinking through, and we'll have more questions, Adam will be on the Discord server to uh, interact with you to to answer your questions. Um, yeah, and then yeah, there is a special there's a channel created for the for the talk, so feel free to jump in there and uh, and ask anything. Also, just generic Kubernetes operator questions is also fine, or, or even Kubernetes. So I'm happy to answer. I hope that the uh, the like the, the flow of the talk was uh, was followable the, with all the coding and stuff. I'm like, it's 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 always hard to know whether it's uh, for others. It's um, because it's also hard to gauge the the levels of people that the people know Kubernetes already or not, and so on. So like, that's right. Yep. And I just posted the the link uh, to join the Discord server, and we'll bring you to that particular room that for where Adam will be too. But you can chat in any other space too. But in the general channel or the other. But yeah, this is the particular room for Adams. So. Yeah, thanks, Mary. Thank